All right, today's episode, we are going to be talking about a sled pull alternative. Uh, they're a big thing right now doing resisted back pedals are really great for your knees, strengthening and uh, utilizing a little bit of that cardiovascular benefit in the beginning parts of your workout. But let's be honest, those sleds are not very easy to find. They're they're very heavy. They're going to mess up uh, your carpet well, in your house. My wife says you're not using that in the backyard. And I, so I got to go to the park and I can't always get there. I've got a gym that I can go to but I can't always get there either. Yeah, there's a lot of different alternatives. Some have wheels, but they're, you know, a little bit pricey. Some uh, you've got to actually slide and load plates on top of it. But I've got a really easy solution. Our Victory Ropes, uh, I've been using in my home gym for quite a while now. And they're pretty great because there's four bands inside of them. So they're strong enough to get what I need out of them in a small confined area. So what you do is you're going to utilize each of the handle straps on the edges and you'll mount them to say a squat rack. That's what I did. And I doubled them up. So it gives me nearly 20 feet of resistance bands that kind of gives me a working range of about eight to 12 feet back pedaling. So I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But it gives me the same sensation of, of actually pulling a sled, but it's with resistance bands. If you need more, sometimes I've actually put on a third victory rope to where it adds more resistance if I'm really trying to push myself. But if I'm not doing that and I'm doing my normal routine, trying to get ready for my workout, strap them on. I put the little belt piece around my waist really easy and I do those back pedals so in the basement. When you say victory rope, you're basically it's it's similar to the battle rope but it's got how much resistance is in that that the, you're using? yeah the bands are rated up to 300 pounds when you get them super stretched so you want to make sure that uh, you've got them in the length way so each band is about 10 feet long so if you're only going to use 10 feet you got to imagine how a resistance band works when you stretch it out it's got a working range of maybe five to eight feet for just a 10 foot cord but if you double them up with these handles, you can actually double them up and you'll have about 20 feet length after you attach to the squat rack and then make the belt around your waist. You generally are going to be able to get your resistance about 15, 16 feet and you can work out to nearly about 30 ish. So how and are moving you, back and forth. How are you? You're using it as as one, but then you might double it up. Now, how are you doing that and then putting it around your waist? And then I'm picturing where do you anchor it? You need to have an anchor spot. Yeah, so the anchor question, I'll anchor it on a, a lower portion of a squat rack. If you don't have a squat rack, a lot of people with unfinished basements, they have a, a basement beam. You can loop it around that really easy. The anchor straps on these things make them really easy to mount. So just wrap it around and feed the victory rope back through itself and pull it tight. And then you'll have a nice anchored uh, deal. You can also use some type of wall anchors. A lot of people have wall anchors. I personally, I don't trust doors and houses. I don't know what everybody's walking around no, trying to tell you to do pull-ups on door frames. You know, make sure that you got it on the right side of the door and then yank the crap. That, that's not for me. It's, every door in my house is hollow. I'm oh, not yeah. going to trust that. So when you're doing that, now if you're doubling that up, how far... Is that going to go? Because I only have so much room in my basement. So as I was saying, when you get it stretched and you have them set up, uh, we'll put in a little bit of footage to make it clear. So if you're just listening to this podcast, make sure you check the video footage so that you can see the length of it. But when you double them up, you're actually attaching each of the Victor ropes to one another. So if they were laying on the ground, it's probably close to 20 feet. But you've used some of the rope to anchor it to your squat rack. And then you're going to use some of the rope, or I should say resistance band, around your waist to make a belt. You don't need a separate belt. You don't need anything like that. You feed it through its handle strap and you step in really easy. So generally, you'll be standing maybe 15, 16 feet from the anchored position. And then you're going to be able to utilize close to 15 to about 25 feet is going to be your working range for resistance. Does that make sense? So then you can do that basically on the pull sled alternative is going forward, going backwards. Yeah, most people, if you got an unfinished basement, I guarantee you've got a support beam in your house. It makes perfect sense to utilize it like that. Um, if you've got any kind of an anchoring device that you've placed into the wall for other types of resistance band activities... You could utilize one of those as well, as long as it's rated high enough. But I always say you got to be safe. You know, if you're going to be anchoring something on the wall and backpedaling, you better make sure you hit the stud. You know yeah. what I mean? You want to make sure oh. that you've got that kind of a, an anchor placed in properly before you're just walking off something that far. You know, I'm putting a lot of force on that. So that stud, you know, I've read, though, that that stud 
probably you would pull the whole wall down before you would pull it off there as long as you hit it properly. Well, I've had uh, a set of, you know, when we design the fusion cables, I use those all the time in the house. And I think that, shoot, I've had those up for six or seven years now, and I've never had any issues with it coming out. But I'm also not backpedaling far, far away from it, trying to pull that thing out. So I personally like to use squat racks, or if you're working out outside, you can always wrap that thing around a tree, um, you can use fences and things like that at the parks, use the posts that are in the ground. There's a lot of different options, but you don't have to just use a sled. With the victory ropes, you're able to do that type of a thing, throw them in your bag and move around it. And they do work pretty good. I mean, when I was trying to set this up, uh, I, w I was really into some of the knees over toes suggestions. And I was wor worth a try. I've got a funky right knee. I've never really done much training with your knee over your toe before. So to feel, you know, I'm going to give this a go, right? Most people, uh, I feel like if you're an experimenter, you know, you'll, you'll give it a try. It's fun to do that, you know, yeah. to try new things. I'd, in my house now, I'm using, I've got, you know, my upright beam, and then I've also got my overhead beam. I'm not construction-wise, so I don't know. Sure, sure. But they're the sturdiest thing in my house, so. Yeah, you're not going to pull those things down. And if you do, I mean, I think you've got a bigger <laughs> problem, right? I better, yeah. But nonetheless, when, when you actually are trying to set up these victory ropes, there's a lot of different options on what you can anchor them to. But the key is form. So say you get it all set up and you get it right. The one thing to remember about back pedals is they're really nice to do at the beginning of your workout. Uh, he gives that advice and... I found it to be very true. If you just start with that, you can do a little bit of a light stretch, but more often than not, you can kind of jump right into it because you can control the amount of resistance you're going to give your body. So you just keep your chest forward a little bit, make sure that you're reaching back with your toes, give yourself a, a nice little resistance going back. You don't have to stretch it out too awful far early. Get it nice and loose. I like to do things like this in timers rather than uh, you, you take all the thinking out of it, right? Uh, 60 seconds, I'm going to turn a timer on. So you're going you're going back and forth yeah. for 60 seconds, not just a, a rep count. Yeah, I'll just go back and forth for 60 seconds. I use Tabata timers all the time by myself. And I've talked about it before on the podcast. But if you work out alone, it's one of the easiest things to make you go, oh, I got to get started again, get started again. Cause that pesky little phone will be sitting over there and you get a ding and then you, you do this and then you check something and my alarm will go off and burn, you know, a Tabata timer, basically you can set them up to do any types of intervals. And I make it super simple. It's every 60 seconds it goes off. So either I'm exercising for 60 or I'm resting for 60, or I might do a superset where I back it up and try to go 60, 60 back together. But it's super simple. I'm not spending a lot of time trying to calculate different formats. It rings every 60 seconds, and every 60 seconds I'm moving. So now, how many rotations are you going to do yes. of the 60 seconds? Yeah, so generally I would do uh, my back pedal, back pedal. I would do that for 60 seconds, take a bit of a, a break and stretch a little because I'm getting going a little. Uh, and then I get right back to it, and I'm probably doing about 10 minutes, uh, just back and forth, trying to get my blood flow. And as the sets progress, I'm trying to add a little bit more resistance. But 10 minutes of uh, backpedaling. You, you definitely, your heart rate goes through the roof. You're really warmed up for whatever exercises you're going to be doing. It used to be a little bit more lifting weights. Now it's all of a sudden rehab <laughs> stuff, trying to make my body not fall apart. Now, when you, you're going all the way, let's, let's say we go back to what would you call that? The peak. That's it. I can't go anywhere. Uh, you better be careful when don't relax too much when you're going, you know, back to your start. Cause that thing's going to. Yeah, the, the big you. difference between a sled pull and a victory ropes or resistance bands method is you actually have to resist on the way in too. So there's a whole lot of stability aspects to that. But what I like about getting pulled forward is it's actually very challenging to hold your form. So when you get good at doing a, a back pedal properly for your knees, generally you're trying to strike the ground behind your center of gravity with your toes and then pull your body forward. And when you do that, you'll feel it very much in your knees. Increases blood flow dramatically, going to strengthen your quads, going to shoot your heart rate through the roof. But what's nice about it is when you turn the corner and you're headed back in, if you can mimic that same motion you used in reverse, you get double the benefits because... So you're because getting a double dip because you versus the sled, when you stop, everything stops. Yeah. Here, you got to be prepared that 
I've, I've got to use some serious muscle work to, to take this all the way back to start my process but, over. Well, I learned uh, a long time ago when it comes from baseball, the whole reason why everyone's shoulder ever gets injured is because of the deceleration process. That's number one, you know, put it at the top of the list of how someone hurt their shoulder. It most of the time has to do with deceleration. That's where you got your tear from. So in the same capacity, when you're talking about doing sled poles, you're moving backwards. But if you take that load with good form moving forwards, you'll find it's a very different thing for your knee. You've got to stabilize and slow down, just like in baseball or just like in life. When you're walking down a flight of stairs, guess what you're doing? Well, that's Controlling a, the deceleration, right? That, I mean, that really is a good double dip with your muscle development and your balance. And so that's... I've found it to be really good. It works great for yeah, me. Yeah, use it as a warm-up. Don't think about this so much as trying to go out and just build a, a bunch of strength. It's really great for getting a little cardiovascular work in. If you're working hard on the back pedals, stabilizing on the way in, you're going to break a bit of a sweat in 10 minutes. It's a great warm-up. Your legs are going to get nice and toasty. As you get a little bit more advanced, I've even just tried to see how much I can handle and had two sets of the Victor rope. So I'm completely doubled up. And man, uh, let me tell you, <laughs> my hips get, you know, my hips actually get fatigued as well. Uh, but you can really take it as far as you want to take it or just simply use it as a warm-up. But I've nearly gotten rid of a whole lot of weight training for my le legs other than other resistance band stuff just because as I get older, it seems like I'm just trying to keep this body together. Yeah, you're complaining, dude. Come over <laughs> here on this side of yeah. it. Yeah, I think you might have me beat there. But for sure, if you want a nice difference for a sled pole, if you want something you can do at home, if you want something that you can do at the park, move around with, the Victor Ropes is a, is a pretty darn good choice for that alternative.